Real. Now I'm just stressing that because the people that are still chatting are the people I don't see in tutorial. If you do not turn up, I'll put it as an announcement as well because we know people are, you know, are sick and these things happen. But then you have to go online and you have to have documentation. It's a lot harder to resit an assessment that is worth 30%. So just getting that clear, and I'll send out a message as well for all the others that aren't in here, 30% assessments are harder to reset. So you have to think about, you know, being able to document why you weren't able to come in that particular tutorial. And I'll just give, um, you know, that, that message will go out. But the first thing is if something does happen, very first thing you want to do is email us, whether it be me or Dave, just email us straight away. So at least we can get you on the radar, you know, that you just haven't been sleeping all day because 9 o'clock's too early for you to come to a tute, all right? Because they're both at 9 o'clock. I've heard that one. I know, not just you. So that's what's going to happen in there, guys. Anyone got a question about that? All right, so it's all coming up. You've done five of the six weeks. You've got this week still to go. You've got lots of redemptions you can still be putting in, guys. I mean, you know, there are people that just haven't started thinking like that yet. And how important it is, because if your one test is worth 30%, you might need to get your quiz mark up. So every little bit counts, okay? Every little bit counts. So are we ready to go? Let's go back over here. Page. What are we on about? Page 64. So are you ready to go? All right, we okay with the lights like that, Cassie? Is that all right up the back or do you want one set of lights off? That's all right? Okay, here we go. Drop-ins, the reminder's always about drop-ins. And then it says redemptions. Again, I'm saying to you, keep those marks coming in because it's all going to make a difference, especially, I don't want to jinx you and say you'll have a bad mid-semester, but you just don't know with your mid-semester on that day how you're feeling. So lock some really good marks away in your redemptions. Totally different. We've got sequences and series. That means a bit of calculus rest. Calculus comes back to us though. So for the moment, we've got a week away from calculus. So you guys are on page 64. All right, keep an eye on me. Get your calculators ready because there's a bit of calculating to be done. All right, as well. Have them ready to go. A set of numbers whose members are arranged in some sort of definite order or obey some sort of rule is called a sequence. So you'll often hear sequence and then you'll wonder what's the difference with the other word. So at the moment we're looking at a sequence, a pattern. The numbers in the sequence or terms are called, sorry, in the sequence or series are called terms. And then what happens is when those terms are being added, it changes to a series. So the difference is the series is just the set of numbers, like the pattern. And once you put the word series down, you are adding them up. So a series is now you're going to do a some sort of sum. Okay, so you've then got a sum of these numbers. Both sequences and series can, be, can also be referred to as progression. So you might remember if you've had it in your high school days, you'll hear the AP or GP for arithmetic progression or a geometric progression, that's why that word pops up. So if you see it on any other resources, you'll know why. Now this sigma notation, here it comes. Sigma is just the Greek letter, and it means sum. But what's the hard part of this is interpreting those symbols that are on there. So what happens is, you've got sigma, that's what this part is. So you say to yourself, it is the sum of, and what you're about to do is sitting here. And it says in this case, it's x to the... K, that's what's going to happen in this one as an example. And it says, I want you to start at, now here's the bit of the trick, it doesn't always start at 1. So keep an eye on where it wants you to start. So put a little reminder, don't take it for granted. People think it always starts at 1. And then it says, keep going, 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 going until I get to, and then it has a number up the top or perhaps just a letter like this one. All right, so the starting point is the one at the bottom and it wants you to keep substituting numbers in from 1 then to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 
until you reach the top number, whatever happens to be there. Okay? So in this particular case, this one here, it's saying it would like the sum of, all right, and then it says x to the k, so this is the actual, I guess you could think of it like a function or the rule to follow, and it tells you where to start, so put your little starting point down here, tells you where to finish up here. So what they would like you to do is put 1 in, so you get x to the 1, then it says put the next one in, plus x to the 2, plus x to the 3, plus, plus, plus. Now you can't actually add that up. It doesn't have a value because it's still in algebra. But it's the getting used to how do you get these terms out, how many are there as well. Okay, so how many are there? So we'll have a look. This one is done for you there, but we're actually going to evaluate it as well. So this tells you, here is, I guess, the function, if you want to think of it like that. And it says, please start at k equals 1. So you put 1 plus 3, which is 4, and you want to square it, plus, and then you keep putting the k value in. You put 2 in, you put 3 in. All right, you keep going until you reach the top number. There's no shortcut way to do this except to write them out. When I put the 5 in, it's the last one. 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 squared. Now, if someone then wanted you to evaluate this, they're waiting for an answer. So you first of all show yourself what it is you need, and then on the calculator, do the actual sum. All right, so this one actually has an answer. So figure out 4 squared and 5 squared, but always write down what it is you are calculating, because then you go to the calculator. Anyone else get 190? Yep. So 190 is the sum of these particular terms, all right? Same with the next one, and there's a bit of a catch. You can see that the start is at 3, and they're the things you want to keep your eyes out for, small details, and it wants you to keep going until you get to the k value of 8. So the substitution has been shown for you. You can see it is 5, okay, to the power of, they did a 3 plus 1, that's why there's a 5 to the power of 4 sitting over 3. Can you see how you write down every single term that you need? And then if needed, you then go and find what the answer to that is. But the crucial part is you putting those actual numbers down. All right, don't just come up with the sum. It's not this part that's the most important because usually most people will get this wrong if they have not set this up. So here's our lecture example. Have a look at where it starts. All right, so I'm going to start with n equals 3. I'm going to put it in. So it says the first one will be 2. It's got 3 squared plus 3. So that's 2 times, and if you want to figure out, I'm just doing 9 plus 3 is 12. That's the first one, plus. Then I go on to the next value, 2, and then I put 4 in. Okay, so I'm substituting a number there. So I'm going to put a 4, so it's a 4 squared plus 3. So far I've got 2 times 16, 17, 18, 19. All right, so then I go again and I put 2. Again, I put the 5 in, 5 squared, plus 3 is 25, 26, 27, 28. So this is actually what I've shown everybody, that I'm actually going to do, all right, that there. That there is a plus. We'll make sure that comes out a bit better, plus. So it says 3, 4, 5. Now with your fingers, if it's not very many, ask yourself how many terms should you have had. And what most people do, if they're going to trip, what they see is they see the 5, they see the 3, and if you do a subtraction, you only get 2. So quite often people think there's only 2 terms. But in fact, there's not. You always add one more. So in fact, I'll put up here that the number of terms would have been 5 minus 3, the top number, take away the bottom number, but you always add one. So there should have been three terms, and I'm just checking, have I got my three terms ready to go? All right, so if I do, I'm going to then be able to push in. Remember, we want to see what it is you're doing. Did anyone else get 118? Yeah. Yep. So 118. But it's not just about the 118, it's about setting it up, and it's about the small details, making sure you've got enough terms in there. 
So, next one comes up. Again, it starts at 1, so you can see here it says start at 1 and go from 1. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. I already know I've got 4 terms. So what I'll do is show my substitution. 1 plus 1 on 1 squared plus 1 plus 2 on 2 squared plus 1 plus 3 on 3 squared 1 plus 4 on 4 squared. Now I've shown my substitution pretty quickly and then I'll go to the calculator and see what I've got. Okay. I think I'm going to get a fraction out of this. Anyone else get a fraction that says 505 on 144? I won't write the decimal because the fraction is quite beautiful and exact. If you want the decimal, it's about 3.506. Okay, Rebecca, we're good? All right. So it's about setting it up. That's the secret to it. Anyone who wants to take shortcuts usually fails or makes a mistake. If you want to see how many terms, again, with these small numbers, most people go, well, I can see I've only got that, four terms. But if you want to check when there's larger numbers, we should have had 4 minus 1, that's the top number minus the bottom number, and you always add 1. So there should have been four terms, and I can clearly see that there were four terms. So that's the sigma notation. Are you comfortable with it? Can you tell what the bottom one is? Can you tell what the top one is? Do you know how many terms you should have in your sequence or your series? And now we start the division. That means we're about to spend some time, probably the first half, on arithmetic. So arithmetic sequences and series. These are just the patterns, first of all, and then these are going to be when I'm adding them up. So se sequences and series when it's arithmetic. So arithmetic just means I get to the next number by adding a constant. So I'm adding a D value every time. I'm adding a constant to get to my next step. And it's been written down for you there, and it says that A will be the first term. A is always defined as the first term. D is called the common difference. So that common difference may be positive, may be negative, might be a fraction, might be a decimal, all right? Could be a third, could be a log that's coming back into your life. So all of these things from 1, 2, 4, don't be surprised if some of the old stuff comes back at you. But it's a constant, the same number gets added on every single time. And again I'll say added on, but it might be a negative number. So in fact the, the actual numbers go down in value. It tells you on, under the definition it says that you can find this particular term. So TN, the definition is that TN is the nth term. All right, it's so the general term. So the definition in your book has T1 would be the value of the first term, T2 would be the value of the second term, and so on. N's the number of terms in the sequence, and it says Tn is the value of the nth term or the general term. Now I want you to add one thing next to that definition up there. All right, so I hope everyone's listening because this one will pop up at some point. What do you notice if I asked you to do T4 minus T3? Even in the algebra, can anyone say what the answer will be automatically? What should T4 take away a T3 give you? Not a T, but a... I'm hearing a T. Was that what you said? Not T, but D. should give you a D. So I'll show you what happens if you actually take this one. Okay, if you actually take this one here, that's a T4, take away a T3. What ends up happening is you get that and it gives you a D value. Now I didn't really have to figure that out algebraically. I know that it is because that's the actual test. So if you want, what I want you to do here is say, if somebody hands you the information that it is arithmetic, if they hand you that information, that's wonderful if they hand it to you. And you'll see me circle the word arithmetic if it's been handed to us. If it's not handed to us, that's the part we're not good at because your job is to test if it is arithmetic and in the second half, you'll get the other type, which is geometric. So you can't just always assume it's going to be arithmetic. So the test is if your T4 minus your T3, which gives you D, 
should also be the same as your T3 minus your T2, which is also the same as your T2 minus your T1. So remember, I didn't say the bigger number. I said term 4, take away term 3. And it works no matter what, whether you've got positive Ds or negative Ds. The test is, if you keep getting the same number, the constant number, T4 take away T3 if it lands you with some constant. If you get the exact same constant when you do T3 take away T2, then you, show, you are showing us, yes, this one's an arithmetic progression. And then you can use all these formulas. A big reminder, this formula here only works for arithmetic. So that's why you need to say it's a great rule, but it only works for arithmetic problems, okay? So here we go. You've got about four of these, four or five, in the lecture examples. So it says, what is the 21st term? Now, I'm going to set this up from scratch. If you've never done this before, first of all, it wants to know what T21 is. That is what it's asking you for. It does not want you to keep the pattern going for 21. It wants you to take a shortcut because, remember, to make things harder, I might have asked you what's the 121st term. And nobody's going to sit there and do it for 121. I'm looking out there. I'm sure nobody would. So here's the thing. The shortcut is, by being told it's the 21st term, you've just been handed your N. So you know the N value. You look at the sequence, and even if at the front of this you go, well, I'm not real sure, but is this? Now, I'm just saying to you, I realise that all of these are in the arithmetic position. All of these are going to be. But I'm going to pretend I'm not on the arithmetic page. How can you say, before you bring in a formula, how can you say to yourself, yep, I've done my check, I know this is arithmetic. What do you want to do, Jack Jacqueline? Yeah, and I mean, you don't have to do all of them, but Jacqueline just said you can take 17, take away 13. Is it the same as 13, take away 9? That's the question you want to ask. So I'm just putting this into your heads. I'm sort of brainwashing you that you want to do a check, and if you get the same answer, the other thing you have already done is found what the D value is. The D value is that number right there. So you've now got an N value which is 21, a D value which is 4, and the first term, which is pretty obvious, was a 5. So you now have enough information. So I'm about to quote the formula because I know this is an AP, so I've put an AP on the side. I want you to keep reminding yourself because in the quiz, they're all going to be mixed up. You won't know unless I hand it to you and I say the word arithmetic. So once you know it's an AP, then you carry out this formula, and you say, there are four variables in that formula. You have to know three of them, and you have to go finding me one of them. And each time I use this, I might change the variable you have to find. So right now, you are looking for this one, T21. You simply show the substitution. Please don't get sloppy and, and say, I don't need that substitution, because remember, there'll be thirds and logs and other things coming your way. Find the answer. Once you've written your substitution down, guys, all right, then you want to just go from left to right. You don't need to show me anything else. Did anyone else get that the 21st term was 85? Yep. When you get that number, I want you to just have a gut feeling, and I mean that nicely, which means I always go back and check, because you know the one place people make the mistakes? When the numbers are going down... Right, They go find their 21st term, and if you're actually concentrating, if your pattern was going down, it probably shouldn't be 85. But I'm pretty happy this one should be 85 because it was going up. All right, so second one says, find the 11th term. Now, over on the side, I just want you to go and do, is, all right, is 9 minus 6.5 the same as 6.5 minus 4? So I've got a 2.5 on this side a two and a half on this side, and what I've also managed to do, in doing that little test, I've managed to find my D value. So here's what we've got. They would like the 11th term, so they must have just told me the N value. I can tell you the A value, and I just figured out over on the side that D value was a positive 2.5. 
So I think it's an AP without a doubt, so I call up. Now you see how I keep writing that AP? That's because I don't want to call this formula up if it's not an AP. So you want to make sure that you're always testing yourself. I'm going to show my substitution, which is exactly what I want you to do. Show that line, which is the substitution. We know things can go wrong over here when we push buttons. Anyone else get 29? 29 it is. Does it seem sensible? The pattern was going up, so I'm pretty happy to walk away because this pattern was going up. All right, third one, 26th term. Okay, 26th term. I'm just waiting because I can see a few people still just looking. Have a look at the pattern if you're ready. This one's coming down and the mistake gets made because your eyes can see the numbers on the side, they're going down and the most common mistake is that when they see these numbers, they see the number 4. It's got something to do with 4. But this is where, if you just formally say it this way, always ask yourself, is 2 minus 6 the same as 6 minus 10? You've just got yourself a test and also you've just found yourself the D value. So there's a little bit of a checking mechanism because I can see they want the 26th term. That means they told me the N. I can see the A value is 10 and quite clearly over here I can see the D value is a minus 4. So I think it's an AP, so I'm bringing in this formula. Ask yourself, is it valid to bring this formula in? Is it an AP? You have to keep saying to yourself, you're not allowed to use this formula if it is not an AP. I'm going to show my substitution. As I said, this is times by minus 4. Now I expect this number to be going down. So when I get my answer, if it hasn't gone down, then I know there was a problem. That's why you're always checking on yourself. Now I got minus 90. Anyone else? Yeah. yeah? Now I feel good about that because I could see the pattern was going down. So again, walking away pretty happy, pretty sort of quickly responded to. That's the other thing, not taking too long to respond to it. The next one in there is the 95th term. So again, I'd say to myself, first of all, is, and I'll put minus 5 minus minus 8, the same as minus 8 minus minus 11. And by doing that, I'm doing two things. I'm checking if it's an AP, and I'm also finding my D value. So again, there's a, a very good reason why you do that little test. So we're looking for the 95th term. We don't really want to push them all in. So the A value is minus 11. The D value is a positive 3. These numbers are coming up. They've started down in the negatives, but they're coming up. So I believe this is an AP, so I'm going to call upon this formula. And it says minus 11 plus 95 minus a 1 times by 3. Remember, we give you lots of beautiful marks if you get that substitution out and put it in front of our eyes. If something goes wrong in the calculator, I've got a 271, all right? So I'll still get marks if I've shown that working out. Now things get a little more interesting. We've got a couple coming up where life then gets a little harder. When you go to read the, this question, it says if... The 49th term of an arithmetic, oh, arithmetic sequence. So, first of all, I don't have to do any testing here because someone has handed me the word and said this is arithmetic. So, without a doubt, I know it's an AP. So, all the AP formulas are allowed to appear. So, I know it's arithmetic. And the way they've put their clues, they have said, that the 49th term, so I'm going to write it like this, T49 is 136, there's one clue. And the other clue says that the first term is minus 32. And the question wants you to find the common difference, which is the D value. Now, as I said before, there are four variables in this formula. So here, here they come, Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 times by D. Now, if D is the one you're looking for, you must have the other three. And it's about putting the other three in the right place. 
So do you think you know your term? I think I do. Here it is there. Do I know my A value? Pretty, pretty sure it got told to me. And it's the N value. Again, it was told to me because here it is there. It's telling me that N was 49 because it was the 49th term. So making sure everything goes in the right places. It goes something like this, plus 49 minus 1 times by D. Now that's just an equation, and it's up to you to solve that equation. So once you've shown that substitution, I will look at that equation, or Dave will look at it, and see what happens next. But basically, I'm going to add this 32 to both sides, so I get 168. I've got 48 times D. I'm going to divide by 48. Now, remember, this answer can be a fraction, all right? It can be a third. It can be lots of things. So don't sort of be surprised. This is not the time to think, am I supposed to get a decimal? Because the common difference, remember, can be anything at all. Anyone else get three and a half? Yep. Common difference, I look back at my question, did I give them what they wanted? And I'm pretty sure I did. Could you check it? You could go ahead and check it if you wanted to. Go back forwards and say, I'll, I'll try and find the 49th term by using this. All right, and see if you get 136. So that's just you checking up on your equation work. All right? All right, two things coming up on the next page. Two questions coming up, and now we'll see a bit more of your, I guess your 124 coming through. So all those basic skills we learnt. Here comes the question. It gives me three terms and it says there's a 2x, that's the first term, there's a 5, and the third term is a 6 minus x. And again it gives me the shortcut. It says I will hand to you that this is arithmetic. And the question says find d. Right, well find d, the common difference. Well I'll just do this again. I know this is an AP, this is the first term, this is the second term, and this is the third term. Now D is what I've added, can be positive or negative, to get from the first to the second. It's also what I've added to get to the next one. Now life can be a little hard if that's how you approach it, because you want to say, well what did I add to get to the next term? It's much simpler if you think about using, let me get rid of that E, if you think about using the test and say, since someone told me it was arithmetic, I will test if, well not so much test, I'll use the knowledge that T3 minus T2 should equal to T2 minus T1. Now what I'm going to do here is put the term, take away the second term, the second term, take away the first term, and all I've done is set myself up with an equation to find X. Now this is one approach for you to unlock what the value is. So this says I've got 1 minus x is equal to 5 minus 2x. Keep solving. That's just an equation. So you solve and I'll solve. See if we get the same answer. I'm getting x is 4. Now I didn't say that was the answer. I said that's x equals 4. And that's the other problem. People aren't concentrating on what was, what was it I was supposed to find. This didn't say find x, it could have, but it said find the common difference. Now I found x, so I'm going to make my life easier by saying then this was 2 times 4, which was 8, this was 5, and this was 6 minus 4, which was 2. Now I've actually found my x value to actually see what the three numbers were. Can you now see what the common difference would be? Positive or negative, and if you're not sure, I'll do a t2 minus a t1. A 5, take away an 8, and I get a minus 3. The question said, please find me D, and that's one way of finding D. So it's about knowing that you can bring this test into your calculations because someone said it is arithmetic. Because it is arithmetic, then this must be true. T3 minus T2 must equal T2 minus T1. So don't forget about those sort of setups. All right, and the next one, if you're already reading it, I'll give you a clue that there are two things to find, and because there are two things to find, you're probably going to need something from 124 to get us through. 
Let's set it up. The third and eighth terms of an arithmetic, so there they go again, handing me that this is arithmetic, so they've given me that pass to say you're allowed to use the arithmetic formulas. I will tell you that the third term is 470, and I will tell you that the eighth term is 380. Now that's, that's me just interpreting those words, the third term and then the eighth term. Now what can I do with that? Well, one way to set this up is to use your Tn equals A plus N minus 1D. Put in what you know. Well, I know that 470 was the answer. I don't know what A is. They're also asking me for it, so I'm pretty sure I don't know what it is. I know that N was 3, so this is 3 minus 1, and I'm pretty sure I don't know what D is. So I'm pretty sure that if I tidy this up, 470 should equal A plus 2D, and it looks like I'm going to get something similar out of the second one, and I'm already starting to think that this is a simultaneous equation because I'm looking for two variables, and we used to do this in 1, 2, 4, simultaneous equation. We tend to make it a bit easier, so you can see that there's not much to do. Do you remember your substitution method or your elimination method? I'm going to go with an elimination method. And again, it's up to you to decide, but I can see two equations, one and two. Now, it just depends what you want to do. If you want to do one, take away two, you can, or you can do two, take away one. Now, I can see that I'm going to do two, take away one, and the reason is because of these Ds here. So what happens is I'm going to do 380, take away 470, and A, take away an A disappears, and a 7D, take away a 2D. That's the reason why I chose to do it in that order. Now, I realise at this point that I think I'm going to get a negative answer, but I'm not put off by that. So no matter what you do, you know that there's going to be a negative number happening somewhere. You could have said that was coming your way because you could see the numbers were going down. Did anyone else get minus 18? Yep. Now, that's half of what they wanted. They said, please find me the common difference. So I found the common difference. I'm allowed to go back into 1 or 2. All right, so 1 or 2 I'm going to substitute just like I did with simultaneous equations. I'm about to substitute into, and I'll go into 1, 470, 470 equals A plus 2 times my minus 18, and then I'll just solve it for A. All right, so meet you at the A answer. Anyone else get 506? 506? Now, I look back at the question. I never walk away from the question until I'm sort of satisfied that. Should it be bigger than the third term? And I, I always go, well, it can be. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is because the third term was 470. The eighth term had gone down to 380. So I feel pretty safe in saying that my A value is a big number, 506. And I also feel very safe in saying my common difference should be a negative 18 out of that. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's a number one. That bracket there might have just come out a little bit closer. See number one up here? One or two. Sort of doesn't matter, but one or two. Came in, came in a bit close there. Doesn't matter which one you pick, you should get the same answer no matter what. So being able to not just do the simple questions like the ones that were on page 64, but also applying it, to harder questions, and don't be surprised if you get a simultaneous equation coming out of it. Again, there's lots of different ways. You might say, oh, can I do it another way? Show all of your working. You're quite legitimate working. It'll be fine if you have a very valid reason for doing what you do. It then says, now we're talking about adding up these patterns, all right? So this becomes the word series. So now you'll see the word series, and it says... It's going to be an arithmetic sequence, and then I want you to add up some of the terms. So it goes on to say, for example, 
a 2, a 5, an 8, an 11. That's the sequence, just the numbers. That's the pattern. But once I put the pluses there, I've now got myself a series. And we also want to know how to add those up. So arithmetic progressions, the sum of. And it says, is there a formula that gives us the sum of the first n terms, all right, of any arithmetic progression? And it just goes through, a bit of algebra there, it's on your page 66. And you can see that if you followed this through the proof, all right, if you followed it through the proof, all right, it's going to say that you end up with this formula. So you can see that... On this uh, PowerPoint, there's some extra lines there to say why you end up getting this formal proof. But a lot of you have been through school system and will have seen that. So the formula says, if you have got an AP, and I'm going to stress, this is a formula if you know you have an arithmetic progression that you wanted to do the sum of. You know what N is. N is how many terms. You know A is the first value. And again, there's a D in there. So the formula can be used, again, there are four variables. I ask you to find one and I give you the other three. So you've got to think about that. You've got to be able to say she's not always going to ask me for the sum. She might give me the sum and I have to do some equation work to find the others. So it pulls it out again and it says, the first uh, lecture example on page 67, what is the sum of the first 11 terms? Again, I'm going to get you to pause and say, if you're in a test, before you bring in a formula, say to yourself, have I got an AP? All right, because I just want you to be trained and say, don't just jump to it straight away and get sort of, I guess, sucked in. Is 10 take away 7 the same as 7 take away 4? And I think I'm getting a 3 and a 3. And in the meantime, I've just found what my <coughs> common difference is. So now I do think this is an arithmetic progression. And they would like me to find the sum of the first 11 terms. So this is what they've said. I want you to find, you don't have to find the 11 terms, but I want you to add up the 11 terms. Now again, you'd be silly to go and write the 11 terms and add them up, because I might ask you for the sum of the first 111. So you never want to just say, I think I'll just push them all in. You want to be able to say, I can use my algebra to do this. I know my A value is 4, and I know my D value is 3. So I think we're ready to go. Sum of 11. So the formula says Sn is equal to... And again, you're going to have it written down. Do you know, I still get some people who have uh, incorrect formulas on their formula sheet. So make sure this time around there's a lot of formulas. You'll have a group of formulas for the arithmetic, and then you'll have a group of them for the geometric. So make sure they're all correct before you go anywhere. So it's n on 2, and then it says 2a plus n minus 1d, and then it's all put in a square bracket. So here we go. I'll start over here. It says put 11 on 2. It says 2 times 4 plus 11 minus 1 times by 3. Now once I've written my substitution down, I don't need to show anything else except go to my calculator and ask it everything I've just done from left to right. So straight away I go in to save myself some time. I don't need to see any other bits to it. What kind of answer? Anyone get 209? Yeah. 209. Does it, and I say this word, does it sound sensible? And I mean for you to look back. I started at 4. The numbers were going up. It sounds sensible that I've got a sum of 209 because there's lots of positive numbers being added. So the sum is 209. Second time it says, what is the sum of the first 26 terms? So again, I want you just to get into that habit of saying, is 2 minus 6 the same as 6 minus 10? And in the meantime, you've also found yourself the D value. So I think that it would like S26, S26, and then it says, I'm giving you N is 26, A value is 10, and over on the side, I did my calculations. And again, there'll be people who put 4 down by accident. 
So here we go again. S26 is, and I'm quoting the formula, 2A plus N minus 1D, so that I can say this is a 26 on 2, and I, I will see what you place into your formula here, so that if anything goes wrong, I always go and say, well, I can break down where the error happened. Anyone else getting a negative number? A yeah. 1,040. Now, again, initially you get a bit shocked by it, but should it be that negative number? Look back at the numbers. They're going down by 4. I've only got the first three, and they're the only three that are positive. The rest of the numbers, thir there's 23 others that are negative. It sounds reasonable that it was a negative answer by the time we added it up. So that one is done, some of the first 26 terms. All right, the last one, again, find the sum to n terms. So it's already telling me I won't be pushing this on the calculator. It's going to be an algebraic answer, but it's been specified that it would like to be simplified. If I tell you, so here we go, they tell me that it's arithmetic, so I know that I can walk in with that particular formula, n on 2, 2a plus n minus 1d, that's the formula I want. And it says whose fourth and fifth terms are 13 and 15. So these are the clues. Whose fourth and fifth terms are 13 and 15. All right? Now, I've got that formula up, and as I said to you before, if you think about it, that formula has four variables and I've asked you for the sum. So if I've asked you for the sum, the other three should be known. Now, n in this case is just n. n just stays where it is. So n is just n, seems a bit strange. The a value, you don't know. And the d value, you don't know, but you can soon find out. So where we go looking for your d value? Yeah, so I'll just put here, it's a T5 minus a T4, which is a 15 minus a 13, which gives me a 2. Now, that's my D value found. That's great, but I still don't know my A value. So where should I go looking for my A value? I need it to carry it into there. Any suggestions? Any suggestions to find this guy right there? How about we go back and use the TN formula? Because we know... That the, we can use the fourth or the fifth, it doesn't actually matter, but I'll use the fourth term is 13. So I know that the fourth term, all right, was 13. So this one will unlock my A value. So I've got this guy here, A is 7. Again, just check with me, check with mine, is it 7 for the A value? Now have you got enough to start working on the sum? So sometimes you've got to do a bit of groundwork before you can find your sum, the actual question that it wants. So here we go. It says n on 2 will stay where it is, 2 times the a value, plus n will stay where it is, times by d, which was 2. Now that's a beautiful answer, but we've specified we'd like it simplified. So there's just a little bit of tidying up to do. So go ahead and tidy up. I'm getting a 14. This here will give me a 2n minus 2 once I've expanded. And again, I will say this gives me a 12 plus a 2n. And once more, do an expansion. And tell me if anyone else gets 6n plus n squared. Tell me if anyone gets that from the algebra. And I'm not surprised it's not meant to give me a value because the question clearly stated, tell me this um, sum in simplified form. So it was giving me clues that it's not meant to be a value in this case. So that's our answer in simplified form. Don't leave it on the first line and say, well, you figure it out. You have to get to the finish line. And if the finish line says in simplified form, you want to make sure you get to that finish line. And then there's one other formula that you probably also have stored from your school days if you did this. You also know that you can actually find the sum with a shortcut formula. But that shortcut formula only comes about if you happen to know 
the last term in the progression you're working with. Now it comes about because if you just go through again, do the algebra, do, do the whole algebraic simplification here, it comes out to um, state that you can also find S of an arithmetic progression. N on 2 stays the same. This time it starts in the brackets, it's got an A plus an L. Now if you're getting confused with that, that little L, make it a N on 2 and make it an A plus a capital L if you don't like it. If you think you're going to mistake that L for a 1, it's not a 1. L is the last term in the series that you are adding up. So if you had 500 to add up, all right, you want to know the first and you want to know the last. And this is a shortcut way. You can also do it with the other one as well. There's nothing stopping you. All right. So this particular question, what is the sum of the arithmetic series? So again, they've given me the shortcut of I'll tell you it's arithmetic. So I definitely know that any of my arithmetic um, formulas can come onto this page. It says the sum, so the first thing I'm thinking of is SN, that's what they would like. So far, I guess like a, a Google page, it comes up, I've got two things I'm sort of sitting there with. I think I will either be quoting the big one, which is this guy here, or I'll be quoting the new one, which is N on 2, and I'll put it as an A plus a capital L, so you just don't make any mistakes interpreting that. Now either way, it doesn't matter which one you pick, do you know your N? At this point, did anyone hand me how many terms? Can you see it? Does it say it really obviously? I can't see where the N is. So the first problem is, okay, I probably can tell you the A pretty easily. I can tell you the D pretty easily. So I'll get those out of the road. A value. D value, and if you want to be sure, always take the second, take away the first, which is a 3. So I've got two of them out of the road. Now again, it doesn't matter which one you want to use. I think this guy is very attractive because I've got the L value. So I think this guy is the one I want to use. But I still don't know what N is. So somewhere in there you have to do a bit of groundwork to find the N value. So what you want to do is say, it's this guy here which will unlock my N value because I'm going to say, using that TN is 203. The problem is I don't know which term it was. I just know it's down there in the line and I want to figure out which term. So what I do is I use my another formula from my AP, knowledge, And it says 203 should equal, and it says there's a 5 plus, I don't know what N is, I do know that D is 3. Now this is an equation for you to solve, so I'm about to subtract the 5, alright, so again not showing absolutely everything, but I'm subtracting, and I've got 3. Now up at this point you can either expand, or you can make life easier and divide, so the divided by people, they make life easier by dividing by 3. And then you just add 1. So I get a 67. Anyone else getting a 67? Yeah. Yep. So it looks like it's the 67th term I need to be at. So I'm going back to my shortcut because now I found my N value is 67. So it says... The sum of these 67 terms will be 67 over 2. I'm going with my A value plus my last term. Push it straight in. Don't worry about finding little parts of it. Just go straight to the formula once you've shown me what you want. Anyone else getting 6,000? Yeah. 968. 6,968. Does it sound reasonable? It does because I'm adding up lots of positive numbers and there's a lot of hundreds and two hundreds. Just It gets to about the 200 mark to add. So it doesn't sound as though it's uh, a, a wrong number. Right on. Now we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back for the second round. All right, so I'll leave that one there. I'll just turn this off.
Round two. Here it goes. GPs. Geometric. So, obviously something changes. If you haven't done this before, we take it from scratch again. It says that you're going to have a new type of pattern about to emerge. You're not going to be adding the same number to get to the next term. But this time you're going to be multiplying. And when we multiply, we call it a common ratio. So before it was a common difference, and there's a clue. If a question says common difference, it's already saying to you, you know, I think this is an AP. But if the question says common ratio, then you already know that there must be a GP lurking around. So a GP is geometric, and you get to the next term by multiplying. So again, first term, then you multiply by R, then you multiply by R. Sorry about that there then you multiply by r and so on. And the nth term, so the, the, the symbols are pretty similar, the nth term is given as a times r to the n minus 1. So now you've got, all right, four variables. Again, there are four variables. You must know three of them, and you have to find one of them. So it's just like any formula you've had, where there are four variables, we work around it. I'll also get you to add this, put down next to this, that again, if you're not sure if it's a GP, then what you can do is say, I'm about to test, but instead of doing a subtraction, what you are testing is, is T3 over T2 equal to T2 over T1, because what that should give you is not the common difference, but it'll give you the common ratio. Now, again, I'm just going to try and set you up because, again, we know that this second half must be um, GPs, but I don't want you to walk into a quiz and just say, I think I'm all over this. You put the APs at the front and then you put the GPs at the back. All right? So you want to just be cautious about that. So it says find R, so find what you're multiplying by. If you know the first two terms, R, and it says the first term is going to be a 5, and the second term is going to be a quarter. So I've written it down like that. I could also have written A equals 5. Now the question wants you to find R. So it's saying that to find R, so I'll put here, to find R, all right, they've told me it's a geometric, so therefore T2 over T1 must give me my R value. Now again, because you can't see it straight away, you can't see what did you multiply the 5 by to get a quarter. So you can be in an uncomfortable position. Make sure you go to this and say, I will find it by putting the quarter, I'll find it by putting the quarter over the 5. I will show what I'm trying to do, and then I'll just do the rest on the calculator. Anyone get 1 on 20? Now, I'd give it as a fraction, but you can also give it as the decimal, which is 0 0.05. And again, sometimes you'll be in an uncomfortable position. You can't see the R straight away. It's not multiplied by 2. It's not multiplied by 3. So you'll say, oh, and this is how you do it. You don't have to stress out. Put T2 over T1 or a T3 over a T2. So then we go on from that. It says, what is the twelfth term? of this geometric. So I don't have to test it. It's told me it's GP. I'm being asked to find T12. And because I'm in GPs, I'm going to put A times R to the N minus 1. Again, that formula is important to get right, even though you're going to have it on your resource sheet. It tells me the first term is an 8, and it tells me the common ratio is a 2. Now, do I know N? I do because when someone tells me find the 12th term, then you know that n is 12. So here I go. The 12th term will be 8 multiplied by 2 to the 12 minus 1. Now again, you want to do that straight on your calculator. Please, by, by all means, do not make the mistake of saying 8 twos are 16 because the order of operations say the power gets done first. The safest thing is just to push it in because your calculator will actually do it for you in the right order. Anyone else get a big number? 
it is a 16,384. Not surprising, okay, because I started at 8 and I keep doubling my numbers. So it gets pretty big pretty quickly. So there's the first one done. Did you find the 12th term? I'm pretty happy that I have. The next one says, what is the 11th term of this sequence? So it sets it up slightly differently. So again, I'm not real sure. They haven't given me any clues. So what I'm going to say is, do you think, now at this point I've got two types. Do I think I'm multiplying or do I think I'm subtracting? Now, a quick way to solve that is do that test. And again, if you think, oh, I think it's more of a, a, uh, a GP, then just check out, do you think that 4 over 8 is equal to 8 over 16? And in the meantime, you've actually found your R value. So I did a T3 over a T2 and a T2 over a T1. So now I know this is a GP, so I know for sure that I can bring in this formula. They asked me to find T11, so they must have told me the N. I can see my A value, and I did my calculations for my R value. So it's about gathering all. It's like gathering all the ingredients and then putting it in. Tell me again. Like, oh, is it automatically, if it's not a GP, is it an AP? Good question. So what happens is, you're right, Nicholas has just asked, does it make it automatic? If the GP fails, does it make it an AP? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. And the place to watch out for that, and this is a general uh, comment to everyone, is when you do a sum, all right, so let's just, I'm just going to put this up. When you do a sum, all right, if it's got a lot of numbers, say I put from 1 to 100, my gut feeling is I'm probably going to put some numbers in and I'll see if it's an AP and I'll see if it's a GP. But when it comes to these, if that number was smaller, so say for example it went from 1 to 4, there's not many numbers in that pattern and that pattern could be not GP and not an AP. So it tends to be there that most people get caught out by it. So... The answer to that is, I'd be careful. Just because it's not a GP, don't automatically make it an AP. I'd still test myself out. Right on. So I'll put that out there for a second. So this is what we were being asked. T11. It says my 16 times by my half. If you want a fraction or if you want a decimal, put it in as you like. 11 minus 1. So I've got a 16 times by that half. And I'm getting a fraction. It's a 1 on 64. Anybody else? Yep. Now, 1 on 64, it is a decimal, but I tend to leave them as fractions. All right. Our next example says, find the second term. So quite quickly, I can see that they've handed me that it's a GP. They want me to find the second term. And what they've told me, the clues have been given as the third term is 9 on 4 and it says the sixth term is a minus 16 on 81. So I pause and I breathe and I think, right, let me just see the plan. I'm looking for a term. If I'm looking for a term I need in, an, in a GP, I need to know A times R to the N minus 1. I think I know my N, it's going to be the second one. Do I know A and do I know R? Now, I've got a problem because there's two things I don't know. I know what they want me to find. They want me to find the second term. So how do I unlock the A and the R? So again, I'm going to use, I guess, a bit of simultaneous equations. From these clues over here, a 9 on a 4 was the third term. So it was an A multiplied by an r to the 3 minus 1. So in fact, it gave me a 9 on 4 is an a multiplied by an r squared. The same with the other clue, a minus 16 on 81 was an a times by an r. This was the sixth term, so it's a 6 minus 1. So in fact, minus 16 on 81 is an a times by an r to the 5. Now these are, to me, simultaneous equations because I'm looking for two variables 
And again, it's not the usual sort. I don't think I'll be subtracting. I don't think I'll be adding. So you want to make one of these variables disappear. Have a look what happens if you put number 2 divided by number 1. So I'll start with these guys. AR to the 5 over AR to the 2. Can you see what's going to get eliminated if you do that division? What gets eliminated? So I'm saying the words simultaneous equations. There's two variables. There's an A and there's an R. What gets eliminated if you do a division? The A's get eliminated. So in fact, what I'm about to get is an R cubed. And I haven't done the numbers yet, so I needed the number in 2, which was minus 16 on 81 divided by the number in 1, which was 9 on 4. Again, your calculator will do it for you. Righto, so you just plug in all of those things. Let it do all the hard work. A 9 on a 4. I'm getting a negative number. I'm leaving it as a fraction. It's a 64 over, a minus 64 over 729. I'm not concerned because I'm about to take the cube root. So again, some basic equation work. So R is going to be the cube root of that answer. You can take the cube root of a negative number. So again, I'll just let my calculator find the cube root of that particular answer. And it says minus 4 on 9. Anyone else get minus 4 on 9? So I found my R value. Now, one way or another, you have to take the clues that they give you and actually, before you start driving, I say, find out what it is you're searching. I know I've been asked for the second term, so I know I've got my N ready, I've now got my R ready, but I still don't know my A value. I'm going to go back into number one, all right? So I'll do my little substitution down here. Sorry about that. I will sub in... Minus, I'll put R is equal to minus 4 on 9 into number 1. So it says 9 on 4 equals an A value multiplied by this number squared. So I'll find my A value. Anyone got a fraction as an answer? Or a decimal? 11 point? Anyone got an answer for us? Seven hundred and twenty nine on sixty four? Anybody? Or it's an eleven point something something. Square that number and then divide both sides by that what would be a sixteen. <coughs> So this one here, just checking before I go any further, I'm just going to get someone to tell me for sure that we're okay. A 9 on 4 divided by 16 on 81, I'm getting a 729 over a 64, otherwise it's known as an 11.3906. Anyone out there? Yep. Confirm it because it's not a pretty number and that's when you sort of start to think maybe I'm not right. So here we go. We just wanted to find the second term. So basically we wanted to find the second term. We now know this is my first term multiplied by my R, which is negative. And again, there's so many places to make mistakes. If you don't put that R as negative, all right, I'm pretty sure the first term was positive. I'm pretty sure the second term better be negative when I go to do it. And again, anyone getting the answer minus? I'm leaving it as a fraction, 81 on 16. We good? All right. And again, it is a decimal, but I never touch the decimals because you have to probably approximate them, so stay away from them. We good? There's our second term. The question said, find the second term. It's not pleasant when there are fractions around. All right, but again, show all your work and get stronger at your equation work. Same as before, we're about to do the sum of. We get two choices. 
Some of you might have done this in school and realised that you don't actually need both of those choices. So it turns out, I'll bring the two formulas up. So on yours, all right, it says that it's in the box and it says it will either be this. Most people who know about this formula use it with R. See the R is in the second position. So usually when R is between 1 or minus 1, basically when it's a small little fraction, and then people know that they can use this one, and it just swaps it around, and most people use this when the absolute value of R is greater than 1. So bigger numbers, positive or negative, it doesn't matter. But in fact, you don't need two of them. The one formula actually is enough to figure all of them out, but that's why there are two there, okay? So here we go, formulas figured out, find the sum of the first six terms of this series. Again, I don't want you to get sucked into thinking it's always going to be a GP. So say to yourself, just go for a check and say, is 2 on 4 the same as 4 on 8? And if it is, I'm getting myself my R value. So even by doing the test, all right, you're also checking that this is a GP. Because it's a GP, you can bring the sum formula. The sum formula, you can see the R values are half. Again, if you want, you've got two to choose from. So I'll call up the one that most people go with. I'll tell you where the mistake is often made. Okay, see that N to the power of N? Some people accidentally put it on the outside of the bracket and it makes a difference. So when you put it on your formula sheet and when you put it on your quizzes, make sure that it's not on the outside of that bracket. So something to keep in mind. Highlight it and say don't get caught by putting it in the wrong spot. Have we got enough information? So they were asking us for the sum of the first six. So N was six, A was eight, and my R was a half. Again, I just show my substitution. Eight, one minus a half to the power of six, one minus one half. Go straight to the calculator put it all in. So it's got all of it straight in and anyone else getting, it's a 63 on 4. A 63 on 4 is not so bad as a decimal, so it's a 15.75. Anyone else see that? Now think about the first six terms, they're getting smaller. The first three already make 14, because I can already add the first three and get 14. So I sort of feel good about that answer. I know there's not much more to be added to that one. Round two. And again, my stressing here is put the formula down correctly, show your substitution, and then make sure you can use your calculator. You should not have to give me any more. Once you show me this substitution line there, you just go straight to the calculator. You don't need to give me the bits along the way. So I said thirds and logs and things like that are going to come back at you. So have a look at this one. Find the sum of the first 10 terms. And again, I'm not real sure if it's an AP or a GP. So I'll just go and check. So again, I'll say is 3 root 3 over 3 the same as 3 on root 3? Now a bit of third work coming back to you. I can see this side is root 3. Do I think the other side is the same value? You remember the words rationalise the denominator? So let's rationalise the denominator. Do I think that this answer is the same? I think it actually is. So the answer is yes it is a GP and I've also just found the R value. So by doing that little test, you're testing if T3 minus T2 is equal to T2 minus, oh sorry, over, over, over. T3 over T2 uh, is the same as T2 over T1. So a bit of third work, reminder, I think we're okay to go. So it says find, it's a GP and it says find the sum of the first 10 terms. So I know my N is 10 because that's how many they want me to add. I know my a is the root of 3. I know my r is also the square root of 3. And they want me to leave the answer in simplest form with a rational denominator. A little bit of 1, 2, 4 work. 
So let's see what we get. The sum is going to get called up. Here's the formula. This is a 1 minus. Now I, you can use either one. If you know that root 3 is bigger than 1, which it is, you can swap it around. So I'm going to put the oh, second version up. R to the n minus 1 with an R minus 1. So let's see what happens. It says it's going to give me a, which is the square root of 3. This is the square root of 3 to the power of 10 minus 1 all over square root of 3 minus 1. Now, I would let you pick your uh, calculator up and do the square root of 3 to the power of 10. Why do you know for sure that it's not going to give you a decimal? Or do you know it's going to give you a decimal? Because what was it? To the power of? What was someone just saying? Root 3 to the power of 10. Why do I know that? I would let you pick your calculator up and let you do that. I wouldn't let you do it if it had a 9 up there. I wouldn't let you do it if it had an 11 up there. But why do I let you do it if it has a 10 up there? What do you know about root 3 squared? Does it become rational? Yep, it becomes irrational when it's squared. What about root 3 to the power of 3? Does it become rational? No. So the even ones are rational. The odd ones will be irrational. So I would say, pick your calculator up, put the square root of 3, which is not a pretty number, to the power of 10. Anyone get a number in there? Yes. What do you get for that value? So right now there's a 243 minus a 1. So this is what we're staring at. I say again, because it's got an even power, you know it will give you a rational number. Now I can't avoid this. This is actually a 242 times a root 3. However, the denominator I can't leave because it says give me an answer with a rational denominator. Yep, Justin? Why can't you just cancel out the square root 3 from the top? <gasps> Why can't he? Anyone want to tell him? You want to cancel this guy and this guy? Yeah. Oh, someone tell him. He's giving me... Why? <laughs> Jaden, why not? Because so many people, Justin, are with you because you can't hear them say you can't. They're all going, yeah, why can't you? This is involved in a, uh, a denominator. There are two terms in there. The only way you're allowed to simplify was if that root 3 had been out the front of a set of brackets. Right, uh? But right now it's involved with a minus 1. And I say that because I want people to understand there is a strong bond. There's actually invisible brackets around your denominator and you can't cancel that root 3 unless there was a common factor sitting right there in front of that. So, back to what we had to do. Justin trying to put me off there. Trying to say, why do we have to? Because this is from um, first semester. What's the uh, secret number to multiply by? Root 3 plus 1. Now the root 3 plus 1, on the bottom of this it should rationalise. Now I, I'm coming back to write that number. But the bottom of this you start rationalising. You should get yourself a 3, take away a 1. So what I've got is I've got a 242 multiplied by a root 3 and then I've got these guys here. You'll notice I'm not touching that until. See this guy here, this value is a 2. Because this value is a 2, Justin, now I'm going to say, without a doubt, that guy there is a 2. So that 2 goes into that 242. So that goes once, and up here it goes a 1, a 2, and a 1. You've got 121, root 3, and you've got this bracket. Now, all that was given in the question was make sure you rationalise the denominator. I don't really have to do any more to that. I can walk away from that, or you can expand it. All right, so one or the other, but you have definitely rationalised the denominator. So if you want, this can be 121 times by 3, and then there's 121 with a root 3. 363 sitting there. But again, those last two lines are not crucial. These two here, not, not vital, as long as you have rationalised the denominator. Okay? So you can see how we can throw some 1, 2, 4 work in there. All right. So this is another one of those figuring out how I can unlock. Because it sounds simple. 
find the sum all right, to five terms. They tell me it's geometric, so it doesn't sound so bad. So I know that I want the sum of the first five. Find the sum all right, to five terms of the geometric, so I know it's a GP. And it says, I'll tell you that, the first term is 54. And the other clue, though, that they give me is that the fourth term is a 2. Well, I can already hear the numbers are coming down. But with, without a doubt, I need to know a formula here. And in this formula, it needs an R value. Either one, I'm not sure which one to quote, but it doesn't really matter. I'll quote this one and say, I need an R value. So right now, my driving has stopped because I say, right, well, I've got that ready. I've got the A value handed to me. I know the N value. N was 5 because you're summing the first 5, but it's the R value. So where do you go looking for it? must have something to do with this clue here. So again, you might need to do a little bit of side work, a bit of groundwork first. So go back to a TN for a GP. It says that 2 should equal the first term, which was 54, times by the mystery R. And because it was the fourth term, that means it's a 4 minus 1 sitting up there. So what I've actually got is a 2 is equal to a 54 times by R cubed. Again, it's an equation you need to learn to solve. Now, I think that number is less than 1 because the values are coming down. I heard it say it started at 54, and by the fourth term it was a 2. So my gut feeling is it's a fraction of some sort, a small number under 1. So first of all, do the, sub the division. 2 divided by 54, which is otherwise known as 1 on 27, is an R cubed. Take the cube root, and again, you can do all that on the calculator, or you might know that the cube root is a third, and it's a positive third. Remember, when you take cube roots, be careful because it can be a positive number, or a negative, depending on what number you've got in front of you. I think I'm ready to go. I think that the sum is going to be, again, I'm showing my substitution. There's a 54. There's a 1 minus a 1 third to the power of 5. And then it's got a 1 minus a 1 third. Now, again, none of that's pretty, but I'm going to type it into my calculator. People who have got the newer types obviously have, I think, a slight advantage because it's a little easier to type into the calculator. But the older ones are still fine. Just make sure you put lots of brackets around things. Righto, and then make sure we can all punch it in and make sure we can all get the same answer. So did anyone get, there's two versions, it's 242 on 3, 242 on 3, that number looks like an 80 and 2 thirds. Anyone else? Anyone getting that? Yep. And again, it doesn't sound too bad because I added 54 was my first term. I added some other numbers. And they were getting a bit smaller by the end because the fourth term was 2 and there must have been a fraction on the fifth term. So I could already tell that. It's a reasonable answer. Now we've got the limiting sum. Now this one comes up only in the GPs. So to understand a limiting sum, what happens is in some geometric series, in some, not all, in some the sum, as in SUM, becomes very large as it increases. Can you see that the value here is 2, the R value is 2. Because this R value is bigger than, see this absolute value of R is greater than 1, so it wouldn't matter if it was a positive 2 or a negative 2, because you're multiplying by this value, these numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. That means you can't find a limiting sum because it keeps getting bigger. You keep adding a bigger number, the sum gets bigger. You add another bigger number, the sum gets even bigger. So what happens is, not these cases, but in the other cases, and it says where absolute value of R is less than 1. If you want to write this down, it says it in your book, but if you want to highlight it, it's on page 70. It says that means when your R value is stuck between a 1 and a minus 1. 
If you don't like the absolute value version, right, then write it the other way. It's an R value that is between minus 1 and 1. And it says if that's the case, so in this one, R is actually a half. And when your R is a number like a half, the next term is smaller, the next term is smaller, the next term is smaller, and your sum is eventually not going to budge. It's not really going to change a great deal. So what you can see in front of you on page 70, there's a sum that's been done for you, all right? And it says, so I'll just get to this example. So it says, for that series, see the one that says 9 plus 3 plus 1 plus a third plus a ninth. If you take the sum of the first five terms by the formula, it says there you'll get 13.4 repeater. Now that's five of them being added. If you take the sum of the first ten terms and use the formula, it hasn't changed a great deal. It's 13.499. So what's happening is it's not changing a great deal because those numbers that you keep adding on are so small that it's not making a great difference to your sum. And these are the questions that have a limiting sum. So they don't all have a limiting sum. And the limiting sum formula, you saw, it popped up there before. I'll just go back to that formula there. This is the limiting sum. And basically it was the other formula but this has been taken out because it approaches, all right, the number one. So there doesn't need to be that there. And that's why that formula looks familiar because it really was the other one and then they took out that bracket. And it only applies when your R value is between a minus one and one. You'll only ever see the question being asked. Or you might get a question that says, will this have a limiting sum? And your argument is it will have a limiting sum if R is set in between this inequality here. So for us to practice, okay, down the bottom, one of the questions you used to get in 1, 2, 4 was about a repeating fraction, a repeating decimal, and turning it into, all right, and turning it into a fraction. So do you remember this from 1, 2, 4? It means 1, 4, 1, 4, 1, 4, and it just keeps going on and on. Now what they want you to do, and you must if it says, use the limiting sum approach to this. So you can't revert to what you used to do in 1, 2, 4, if you remember what you used to do. So how do you make this look like a sum? So what you want to do is break up these 1, 4. So this is actually, I'll write it down as this. It's then added to 0, 0, 1, 4. It's added to... 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, and it keeps having these decimals added. Now you can either be in decimals or you can be in fractions. So here comes the fraction version. This guy here is a 14 on 100. This guy here is a 14 on, and it's got to have four zeros. This guy here is a 14, and it's got to have six zeros. And it keeps going and going and going like that. So what they've actually said is, it turns out that 0.14 with the repeaters is actually a 14 on 100 plus a 14 on a 10,000 plus a 14 on, and that's a million, and it keeps going and going and going. So first of all, how do you know it's a limiting sum? Well, I'm pretty sure that the R value is a fraction that's stuck between the minus 1 and 1. If you want to test it out, the R value would be T2 divided by T1. So you can use the decimal or the fractions, whichever one you find easiest. So I might put the decimals in here because I understand that they are the same. 0 0.0014 divided by 0 0.14. Anyone tell me what that comes out to be? Fraction or decimal, either way. Fraction or decimal. Any answer to what the 1 over 100? You can have it as a fraction. You can also have it as the decimal. You now know your R value. So the question had said using the limiting sum. So here comes the formula. The limiting sum, now that's a sum to infinity is another way of saying it. The sum to infinity, the formula said it was an A over a 1 minus an R. 
So do you know the first term? Again, you can be a, a decimal or a fraction person, whichever one you want to be. So 0 0.14 was the first term. 1 minus 0 0.01, I'll go with my decimals. Now, the answer, though, has to come out as a fraction. So I don't mind pushing in the decimals, but when I get my answer, anyone tell me what you get? As a fraction. Anyone get a 14 on a 99? Yeah. And you can check yourself because push the decimal number and it should pop up with 14141414414. So you know that 14 on 99 is the only answer to that one as a simplified fraction. So you can approach it with the fraction version or the decimals. I don't mind which one. If you find it easier to punch in, go with the decimals. But you get the same answer, and it must be a fraction. So just make sure you don't give your answer as the decimal again. Christian had said find it as a fraction. So are we ready to do the page on 71, which is pretty much what we've got to do, but it's going to take us a while. I'm sort of going to speed up a bit. You ready? And if you don't get time to write it down, look back at the lecture, just go to about this time mark and get the last bits in. So this says, do me a sum to infinity. I can see it wants me to start here, and I can see it wants me to finish at infinity. Now, how do I finish at infinity? Well, I don't actually. So what I need to do is figure out what the terms look like. So I don't actually know how this is looking, but I know I only want to get the first couple out, because I need to find the A value and the R value. The secret is put N equals 1 into it, Put n equals 1 into it and it'll give you the first term is 4 multiplied by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to the 1. Find yourself an answer. n equals 2. I'm just setting it up. Second one will be 4 times 0 0.5 and it says squared, so find an answer. You could stop there, but you're not really sure if it's an AP or a GP, so I would suggest you do one more so that you can sort of make sure you know that this is a GP, 0.5 to the 3. So what kind of answers have we got? Fra fractions or decimals? I'm getting a 2 on the first one. The next one I got a 1. And then a 1 and a half, uh, sorry, then a, a half or a 0.5. And so it's saying to me, this is the pattern. The pattern is 2 plus 1 plus a half. Now that I can see the pattern, I'm pretty sure that the limiting sum will be a over 1 minus r, first term, 1 minus the r value. Can you see the r value? Do you want me to set it up? But the r value looks pretty straightforward. What's the limiting sum going to be in this question? What's the limiting sum going to be? Now, I get 4. Now, it doesn't surprise me because the first term is 2, plus the next term is 3, that means 3 already, and the third term got me to 3.5, it really doesn't change much, even though I keep adding and adding and adding lots of numbers after that. Okay? Here we go. Again, if you miss any part of it, just call up that particular part of the lecture. Here's some logs being thrown at you, so I really need to get into this. Find the fifth term of this sequence. Now, that's the problem. It doesn't say what kind of sequence. All right? using the appropriate progression formula. So there's a bit of a clue saying, hey, don't jump in too fast. Let's go and investigate. So I know I want T5. I know that. I know N is 5. But what I don't know is, is it an AP or is it a GP? So it's a bit of log work. What do you remember about your log laws? So what you want to do is you want to be able to say, do I think I'm subtracting? Right, so that means is the log of 28 minus the log of 14 the same as the log of 14 minus the log of 7? Or is, and I'll set it up as fractions, is it the log of 28 on the log of 14, log of 14 over the log of 7? Now, which one is true? Only one of those is true. So you have to decide which one is true because it's either an AP and I'll use the right formulas or a GP and I'll use a different set of formulas. Now, you can test it out on your calculator. That's a nice way to do it.
But if you've decided that it's the top one, anyone else decided it's the top one? Yep. Yep. I like the top one. My calculator's confirmed it. But I have a bit of a problem. I can't just put a decimal in there. All right, so I need the log laws again. I do think it's the first one. So I think it's an AP. So I'm just going to say, can anyone give me, doesn't matter which one you work with, but what's the log laws say? Log 14 minus the log of 7. Anyone remember their log laws? What do you do when it's a subtraction? You do a division. So it's actually the log of, and you put the 14 over the 7. So it's actually the log of 2. And you have just found your D value because you thought it was an AP. So you have just found your D value. So there's a little bit of groundwork, first of all. I'll just start over here and say, now that I know that it's an AP, I know, the first term was the log of 7. I know my N, I know my D is the log of 2. And the question said, find me the fifth term. All right, find me the fifth term. So here I go. I know it's an AP, so I'm back to A plus N minus 1 times D. So remember, make a decision because you shouldn't touch a formula until you're certain you know which one you want. This is the log of 7 plus, this is a 5 minus 1 times the log of 2. Now you wouldn't leave it like that. It's probably some log work that we're wanting you to simplify. So can you remember your log work? Before I can implement this plus, see this plus sign there? What has to happen to that 4? Any suggestions? What has to happen to that 4? Log laws say it goes back up there. So it's a 2 to the power of 4. Now you can implement that plus. That means what did you remember about log laws? So I actually want the answer to that guy. I can't actually push. I don't want anything. I want the word log still there. You can't give me a decimal and the answer. But what is 7 times 2 to the 4? So I just need that part simplified and you get 112. All right. So don't go and push the log of 112. Leave it in log terms as an exact answer. So that would be the fifth term. So there are some hard questions coming your way. You've had some quizzes that were easier. You'll also get some quizzes that are harder. Now, this next one. Have a look at it. How many terms? Now, don't, nobody wants to sit there and actually keep pushing it in so you get to this number. So, how many terms is implying you need to find n? If you know this series, now again, I'm pointing to the word series because again, you don't know if it's an AP or a GP. So before you go anywhere, have a quick look. Do you think it's AP? I'd always check the subtraction. Or do you think it's a GP? Which one do you think? I think it's a GP, so I'm going to call upon T2 over T1. And I think the 10 over the 5 gives me a 2, which gives me my R value. So I definitely think I've got a GP. I've been told my A value is a 5, my R value I just calculated, and they've told me that the sum is a 655355. Now what I want you to do is set this up, right? So I want you to set it up. I'll call upon the formula. SN is equal to A. It's got an R to the N minus 1. It's got an R minus 1. Now, I'm only going to put the numbers in. I'm going to let you go home and try your work out because there should be some logs needed for this because it says 655355 five, five, five is equal to a 5, an R to the N minus 1 over a 2 minus 1. Now, I want you to go away and practice the rest of that, which is just find me the N value but where is the n value? Where is it? It's up in the power. And what did you do last week? Exponentials. So a bit of practice also for your quizzes. Whenever the n, the variable is up in the power, all right, you know that you have to use some sort of log to bring it back down again. So, and also the other thing is you know if your n is correct because your n is a position. How many terms? It can't be negative. And it can't be a fraction. You can't say it's the 51st and a half term. It has to be a whole number 
and it has to be a positive. So you check yourselves when you get through that one. And the other two at the bottom are just a matter of setting up because we all know there are word problems coming our way. So I'm going to set this up with a bob on the, of a pendulum swings through an arc of 50 centimetres on its first swing. I don't have to draw much except to say that on its first swing it goes through 50 centimetres. Let me write that again. 50 centimetres. Each successive swing, so the next one, is 90% of the length of the previous swing. So find me 90% of 50 centimetres. And then when you get that answer, find me 90% of that next answer. All right, now I only want three of them. So what have you come up with? I've got a 50 centimetre, 90% of the next one. What does it give you? It gives you a 45, so it's getting smaller. What's the next swing going to be? About a 40 and a half. Now, just by doing that, you found yourself three numbers. And it wants, find the limit, so there is some sort of limit about the total distance that the bob travels. So you mean if I added up all of these numbers, that's what it's looking for. So this is some sort of, because it's got a limiting sum, you know it must be some sort of GP. And you know the formula says A over 1 minus R. So just by the clues, it said the word limit, so you know there's some sort of limiting sum. Do you know the A value? It's a 50. Do you know the R value? Now, if you're still not sure, but you've got the numbers there to play with, put the 45 over the 50, or are you confident enough to tell me what it is? Anyone confident enough to tell me? Some people will find the numbers and put it in, but you should know that it's being multiplied by... 90% to get to the next answer. So again, this particular limiting sum is about just comprehending, and I mean that in a nice way. It's about putting the words into a simple maths problem and realising that that's all they wanted was this guy here. Okay? And this answer comes out to be, once I push it, I'll put 500 centimetres. And we've got one more to set up. And again, it's about the setting up that hurts people. Now, in your book, by the way, I forgot to stress, the word total had been left off. I put it on the slide. But could you put the word total back into that question as well as the next one? The next one is also missing the word total. So I put it in on the slide, but it had got through on the actual printing now, it's about understanding this question. So I always say a little diagram helps. It says, Dan bounces a ball, dropping it from. Now, as soon as it said it was being dropped, I went like that. So it started probably in his hand, and it dropped 1.5 metres in a downward direction. It's then going to go up two-fifths of what it was on its previous. So someone will tell me what that number is. Two-fifths of that last one. So I'll wait to hear what I get. 0.6 of a metre. Because it went up 0.6, it's also going to come down 0.6. Then it goes up two-fifths of 0.6. So tell me what that number is. And then you'll go down, then you'll go up, you'll go down, you'll go up, you'll go down. And you see my arrows are getting smaller and smaller. Now I just need to set the problem up to get us started. Now, I had a 1.5. Rebecca said a 0.6 up, which means a 0.6 down. What was the next number when you did two-fifths of it? It's a 0.24. So it's a 0.24 up and it's a 0.24 down. Now, they want me to do the total distance that this ball is going to travel. It's a limiting sum. Now, there's two ways to approach this. You can either see that there's all the down arrows... So do one limiting sum with all the down arrows plus a limiting sum with all the up arrows. You can do that. Or you can see that this guy is on its own, so it's 1.5 metres plus two lots of the limiting sum that comes from these guys because whatever it went up, it also went down. So there's the sum of the ups and the sum of the downs. 
Now I'll finish that off and I'll put it up there again. But it's about comprehending what it was. Now you might just wonder, okay, with the last two pages, don't panic, there's just a lot of information about if it's not an AP and it's not a GP, there are other patterns out there. So don't worry too much. It just says there are other patterns. They don't fit in the AP. They don't fit in the GP. Things like the Fibonacci. All right, Fibonacci numbers. Now, when I put these slides up, anyone who wants to, at the end of this, Dave overloaded on the, uh, on the Neil factor, right? So he's got quite a lot of slides. He got a bit carried away with the whole Fibonacci. He must have him as his favourite. I must ask if he's got a Fibonacci T-shirt because he seems to think highly of him. He was a very good mathematician. There's a lot of, a lot of um, slides on it. However, it does not get tested. There's no questions that go with it. But what I do want you to see is the word problems that are in your exercises, they're the ones that create the problem. And my advice is do what we did here. Set yourself up a little bit of a model so that you can see what you've got in front of you. All right? So I'm going to pack this up. Anybody from my troop that does want to pick up a test, you are most welcome to if you think you want to take it so you can start revising. And the only other thing I'll say is that up on the blackboard, just to get you thinking about those um, revision, the worksheets always go up and all of the answers. If you have missed a worksheet, you haven't been here for one of the weeks, there's a good place to start, okay? Yes, we do. Oh, no, not tested on that. No, no. Not tested on Fibonacci and things, no. But tested on A6. Sorry, that's what I thought you were about to say. So that brings you to the...